Hi everyone, this is Estelle Vasudevan and I'm joined today by a very special guest, Kavisha Egodage, who plays for the UAE. But if you're familiar with Sri Lankan names, you will realize that there is some Sri Lankan connection here. So that's why we've got her on the Murali end. Before we get into the questions for Kavisha, I just want to remind you guys, uh, keep following us on YouTube or whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. You can also follow us on uh, Substack where we have a newsletter coming out with uh, lots of good stuff from Dominic, Nick and also Mark. Um, and as usual, we've got the content from women's cricket, men's cricket, the West Indies series. We've got a special recording of, uh, you know, how Sanat's tenure is going with the Sri Lankan men's team. So just keep following us, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll have lots of content coming for you. And now to get into why we are here. So I have Kavisha Egodage with me. She's played for the UAE for, I will let her tell you how many years and when she started and all of that, because it's kind of insane to think about it. Uh, you'll see when we get into the interview. Um, Hi, Kavisha. Thanks so much for making time to come on the show. Thank you so much for having me at this podcast. Yeah, so Kavisha, I before I get into, you know, when you started playing international cricket or cricket at the highest level, right? I just want to understand from you, how, why cricket? How did you get into cricket? <laughs> You're asking Alankan that question. <laughs> I mean, as you know, cricket runs in our blood and mm -hmm. wherever you see, even whether it's in Dubai or whether in Sri Lanka, it's, that's all I play in the gullies and the parking lots. Mm -hmm. So yeah, every time when I go to Sri Lanka with my cousins, we'll have this chair, this one plastic chair that would be our wicket mm -hmm. and we would play and if you hit to the next house that's out or if you hit to someone's window that's out or a six or something. So it runs and my dad loves to watch uh, Sri Lankan cricket day in day out so anytime there's a Sri Lanka cricket going on match going on he would switch on and that's how I fell in love with the game if I understand right you didn't grow up grow up in Sri Lanka right you were born and raised yeah. in uh, the UAE yes okay so you spoke about your dad right like yeah. and I know I know I asked a very obvious question from a Sri Lankan but I need people who are listening to this to understand that yeah it's not just your name that's Sri Lankan, that you, you do have a lot of uh, kind of childhoods that a lot of us Sri Lankans had yes. growing up in Sri Lanka as well, right? Um, yeah. On your dad, right, what is the impact that he had in getting you into taking cricket a bit more seriously? So it all came down to something very silly because as a Sri Lankan mother, my mom wanted me to be doing dancing, you know, the Ud Udarata, yes. those kind of yeah. dancing. So, and then, and I always kind of liked it, but I wasn't very keen in it. But my dad saw that I loved cricket and playing cricket. And then one of my dad's uncle, he told, you know, Machan, there's a cricket club. Why don't you join? It's called Desert Club. It's owned by Sri Lankan um, uh, ex-cricketer as well, Presley Polonoiter. So he's like, you know, why don't you join? He's he Sri Lankan, we are Sri Lankan. It will, keep, it will be good, right? And, he, and I was like, what, nine at the time? And the thing was, there was a clash between my dance class and my cricket uh, uh, practice. So there was a, there was an opportunity, like I could have gone either ways. And then it was up to me. My parents like, see, you do what you love doing. And I was never a fan of dancing. <laughs> so, then, <laughs> so then I joined the cricket club and the rest is history. And you'll figure out it uh, while listening to this podcast. Yeah, so nine years old when you joined the cricket club. Okay, now yeah. it's time to tell people when you first played international cricket and how that came about. All right. So um, I joined the club when I was nine. I played like plastic ball for like, it's not plastic, like rubber ball for mm -hmm. like juniors for like a week or so. And then after that, I got promoted for under 19 because um, the head coach was like, you know, to my dad, Martin, like she's good. Like, why don't you just put her with the... Uh, big boys and let her like you know get squashed and uh, get tough and uh, start playing and then uh, after practicing and all I my dad go found out at Sajikrit Academy they are uh, having trials happening for the um, camp so my dad's like you know go we'll see it's like mm -hmm. you're barely 11 like we uh, we didn't go in the fact of thinking that oh she'll make it to the team or anything okay. we just went because it was an opportunity present to mm -hmm. us went did the camp the coaches were happy and then anyway all selections depend upon the trial match so okay went for the trial game 
I did pretty well for 11 year old, even though our team was losing pretty badly. I kind of held one end at 11. And then um, after a week or so, my dad gets the call that she's been selected for the UA National Women's Cricket Team in 2014. And it was the tournament for Gulf Cup. And that's a funny thing. I actually could not go with the team. Like I couldn't fly with the team because in my passport, it was my baby picture. And as you're aware, you need a guardian to fly along. And it's since Oman is a drive, uh, driving distance, my dad's like, you know, we'll drive you there. So I went um, to the airport, did the photos and pictures with the team and everything. And I drove from Dubai to Oman for my debut tour. I, I, I did read about that. And it was quite interesting, the fact that, you know, you were that young <laughs> that you could really travel with the team, right? How, how was yeah. it? being that age and being mm-hmm. in an environment where I, I understand that UAE probably wasn't at like a professional level at that yeah. point, but it's still adults playing the game, right? What was it like as an 11 year old? Well, I was uh, competing with people who were triple my age, like people mm-hmm. about 25 and above. I mean, when you're a kid, you don't think about those stuff. You just want to play the game and, you know, enjoy and enjoy the experience it comes with obviously i didn't know how to plate my hair properly and all you know but you learn with experience when you're thrown into something you kind of like blend in and learn so that's the thing like at that time it was like oh my god for me it's like i am in the ua women's cricket team Mm -hmm. like and i had to like cut a week of school as well it was like midterms or terms going on so i mean it's even better to cut school and go (laughs) I was in like grade six or something. And then I told my school, you know, there's this and they're like, that's a woman's team. I'm like, yeah, and I'm in it. You can see in my leave letter, I'm in it. So, yeah, I mean, it it kind of makes you mature since you start traveling from a young age. And again, I was battling people who were double my age. And yeah. for me, for me, the thing what that debut tour helps is that I debuted on the finals. The coach okay. had faith in me to debut on the final. We made it to the finals. We were undefeated throughout. We made it to the finals. And the coach was like, every, every like, I think since I was young, he would tell me, like, he could, you could say somewhat like sugarcoating, but like mm-hmm. making my mindset good. Like, even though I was not kept, like, I was not in the team all those uh, initial round games, he would always come and like, he would like give me throwdowns so or he would give me feeling like, you know, better you're doing well like that and stuff and all and then he's like you know you're making your debut in the final and i was like okay that's a big deal (laughs) because it's a must win game for us to be the golf cup champ and i still remember to this day and that only one ball came to me i was at deep third man i picked it up i threw and that's it that was my job for the whole tournament the whole game and we became the champions that's such an amazing story because just a reminder to you guys, she was 11 years old when she was picked, but UAE didn't have official T20 international status at that point, did they? So it was an um, uh, international game, but it didn't have T20I status at that point. You made your official yeah. T20I debut, I think, in 2018, somewhere 18. around there. But just going back to that that debut, that first tournament, right? At 11... What's going through your head? Like you said about the support that you were getting from your coach, right? In terms of, you know, kind of keeping your mindset going and keeping your hopes up and, you know, positivity and all of that. Does it, like when you look back, do you wonder, like, how did I manage to kind of, or is that just as a child, whatever comes your way, you're willing to deal with? It's, I think, as a child, whatever comes, it's like, you know, it just happens with the flow. Mm -hmm. Because I would say I was just enjoying my life. It's my first time out away from parents and everything. At the same time, I was in a safe environment as, you know, everyone mm-hmm. was double, triple my age. So they were like also keeping an eye on me as well. Mm-hmm. So I kept, I felt very safe and everything. And I gelled very well with those bunch of groups, even though I was the youngest over there. <laughs> and I did have a couple of... Uh, uh, people who are like closer to my age, not like closer, closer, like five, mm-hmm. six years yeah. uh, closer and all. So that's the thing. I mean, it's cricket. It, it blends regardless of the mm-hmm. age and everything and everyone gets together. And 
when I look back, I, I feel very fortunate enough to have this kind of experience because not everyone gets to play for the national team at 11 yeah. or go on a solo trip. You could say a solo trip, but even though with a group of friends or teammates uh, away, and again, you couldn't fly solo because I was too young for that. I had to drive all the way yeah. there. So it's all blend with experience and everything. Yeah, so just looking back now, you're 21 years old. Basically, almost half of your life you've been playing for a national team, right? How does it feel to be like the experienced, one of the experienced ones in the team now? Um, <laughs> I feel older for my age. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that when you play so many games, you see the game of cricket in a different perspective mm -hmm. because us as cricketers we don't switch off like even though we ha we had the world cup and i and uh, uae and i went to watch mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. majority of the games including mm -hmm. the sri lanka women's games and all and then from tv is a different perspective when you understand you're a different perspective yeah. but the thing is like you sometimes tend to switch off as a fan as an audience to an actual cricketer cricketer our mind mm -hmm. just keeps on going on like oh she could have done that she could have done this or something but it comes part and parcel of the game. But it's, again, it's all the fun and experience I gained throughout because not everything is about cricket once we go there. It's about those hanky-panky pranks we pull, those memories we create, and obviously the great wins which comes along uh, with the um, thing. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can understand what you're saying in terms of, you know, how as a cricketer, because it is basically your profession, right? So yeah. there's no just it, it's almost like you can't just relax and enjoy it you have to analyze and be kind of thinking about what 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 certain moves mean or you know whatever um i just want to go back since you brought up the world cup um the uae at the qualifiers right i know not a pleasant memory uh <laughs> for you guys but you almost, almost pulled out one of runs. the biggest surprises of of the tournament, right? Yes, it indeed was. You could say one of the biggest upsets if we actually made mm -hmm. it that night. Mm -hmm. But again, it wasn't. It wasn't our day. If it was, yeah. those fifteen runs would have come off easily, and we could have defeated Sri Lanka, one of the biggest names in international cricket so far. And that would have been a massive win for us. And again, that win would have led us to the World Cup and indirectly be a home World Cup for mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you never know. It's again, it's one of those days where you look back and try and analyze. How much ever you analyze, you can't help it. It's in the past. Just You can just talk about it and just say that we were so close to defeating Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And that means you never know. The next time could be our time. It's like these kind of close games kind of gives the edge and on that day who's mentally on top i would say and is gonna be the winner because close games if like i would say this is our second or third close game against sri lanka mm -hmm. we had one in asia cup in bangladesh as well yeah which we had the dls method and it was raining and stuff i know so close games means you never know when the losing team is gonna win the next so it always puts them on their toes as well as on our toes because we know we have tasted it a bit closer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again, it's 15 runs short, which is going to haunt us for our lives. I mean, I keep talking that I have moved past it. I have, but again, it's good to talk it out. But again. Does it also, I suppose, give you guys more confidence? I know I, I asked, Isha also the same question mm -hmm. at the Asia Cup. Like, does it also mm -hmm. give you guys a bit more confidence that, okay, Sri Lanka has been on a fantastic run. I mean, barring this World Cup, they'd been on a mm -hmm. really great run for the last yeah. two years. And to think that you guys came so close to knocking them out of this World Cup. Like, does it also give you that kind of um, confidence that, look, we are at a level where we can compete with these top teams? Definitely. It gives us that confidence that we are one step closer to get getting what we want because we are one step closer to knocking those doors and say, you know, give us that opportunities, give us those exposures which we require to grow because the more opportunities and exposure we get, the better for us. Like to be able to play in a bilateral series with Sri Lanka or mm -hmm. any other higher ranked team is more beneficial for us, even for them in certain matter, you could say, because 
we are knocking on those doors and saying and it gives us a belief system to our girls mm-hmm. as well to the team that it shows that if we put the curry foot out and we think positive and we do what we are doing to the best of our abilities we are able to knock those uh, uh, wins and get the world to recognize us and i know that ua has been in that limelight already but to make it even mm-hmm. a more stronger of a limelight those wins are going to be crucial for us and we are getting closer day by day yeah i'm um- can you just explain to me and like to whoever is watching or listening like what is the system like for girls in the uae because i know in different countries it's very difficult different like you spoke about opportunities to come and play you know higher ranked teams in the international level but we've seen a lot of talent a lot of talent coming through the the scenes in the uae what is the system like from from you know the younger age groups like you've started at the age of 9 right what's that yeah. system like coming through that so basically there's a grassroots level which everyone has which goes from either school or club level and then if someone or let's say someone notices you or anything you get called on to the you know the next level of camps and everything and then the coaches see if you're best fit to the team and how your skills match and everything that's how it goes basically it's performance based everything and it all yeah. starts from the grassroots le- grassroots level the school level the club levels and then it goes yeah, on to the camp just to interrupt you like in mm. at school level right mm. are there a lot of girls schools playing cricket leather ball cricket um the thing is like it's still growing uh, grassroots mm-hmm. level but from where i started to now there's a massive massive yeah. number of schools participating in uh, tournaments it can be either semi cock you know the indoor ball yeah either yeah. that or the we have there is the leather ball cricket as well but mm-hmm. nothing compared to sri lanka obviously they're a test playing mm-hmm. nation but us as the uae ecb both they are growing massively from the last couple of years to pre covid to post covid you can see a massive change in our grassroots level and a lot of girls are actually coming up from the ranks which is a good sign for the uae team yeah it, it must be quite um interesting for you as well right because yes you played international cricket for 10 years but you're also only 21 so i mean yeah. potentially another 15 years of international cricket ahead of you depending on you know how you feel about it how excited are you about you know that kind of growth that you're seeing at 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 the grassroots level and you know domestic level definitely it's exciting and it's a good thing because If you notice women's cricket when I first started mm-hmm. people like what is women's cricket is there women's yeah. cricket and if you notice now because of the games and the most po- exposure we are getting because of almost defeating Sri Lanka and to mm-hmm. defeat in Thailand and other countries and people are actually noticing us and girls are actually looking up to us and wanting to play cricket it's all because of as i said earlier the more opportunities and the more uh, doors we knock the more the development also happens with the girls because they see that there is a career in ua women's cricket there is a career in ua cricket to go and play and as you know every asian is a crazy cricket fan it's in our blood we can't help that that's our dna at this point so that's the thing and we have a lot of aspects in uh, ua by the mm-hmm. sri lanka india and pakistan so when they see on see it on the newspaper or social media is going that um ua cricket uh, ua women's cricket did this ua women's cricket did that mm-hmm. more girls want to start and join that journey they look up to us and they're like oh my god i want to be the next kavish i want to be the next isha oza i want to be the next whoever they idolize mm-hmm. so that shows a lot of growth because for them like for me growing up i had to look at the men's cricket to uh, yeah. grow up and for them they actually have idolized idols in ua who are currently playing and they can look up and when they come into say leave the camp when they see us play against the boys or when they see us live on the tv at international level they see oh my god i want to be like her i want to work hard to that so that shows the potential and it shows why the grassroots level is growing it's all mm-hmm. because of what the year women's cricket is doing and so far we are in the right track we are knocking the correct doors it's just that with time everything comes yeah yeah 
and of course not a lot of opportunities for you know the associate nations in the women's game yeah. either right like if if i was to be critical i don't know if uh, you are allowed to say it but in you know the world cup 10 teams it's it's it shouldn't be happening in 2024 right you, you should be having more teams you should be having more teams in the women's championship and I'm, I'm sure ua is close to qualifying as one of the teams that should be in that women's championship because i mean having covered sri lanka cricket i understand what a huge impact it has had on the women's team playing those women's championship games because that guarantees you certain number of games against better teams during a certain period of time right and i'm sure you know like I said, UAE is very close to knocking on that because they've consistently been one of the better uh, women's national teams, right? You spoke about idols and how a lot of people look up to players from your team and, you know, it's it serves as an inspiration to follow cricket, right? As a career path or as a passion. Who are your kind of idols or who did you look up to when you were growing up? You mentioned that there were no women's cricketers, yeah. right, at that point. So it was yes. men's cricket that you yes. followed. Who were the kind of players who you thought that you, you know, you would really like to be like them? For me, it was simple. It was uh, Tilkaratna Dilshan. I just like how calm and composed he was when he was playing. And he was a typical all-rounder like myself who goes... Uh, up the order and he bowls uh, off spin. So basically that was who I was looking up to and getting my gist and bits about. And I just love watching how he plays. And as you grow old and as you the times keep going, you see women's cricket. And then obviously our hero in Shamari Atapattu became my mm -hmm. idol. And I was fortunate enough to even have conversations with her during mm -hmm. fair break in 2022, as well as 23, and obviously during the Asia Cups and global qualifiers. So it was really nice to have one-on-one -on -one chats with her and just speak to her about how she goes about with the game and everything yeah. because it's always good. And now I love picking her brain up from another Lankan to another Lankan. How is it and stuff. And she too played franchise cricket and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know, what did you do Aki, over here and stuff and all. And I would pick her brain up and like, so she was very cool with that when I mentioned like, you know, I'm a Sri Lankan and stuff. Like, oh, oh my God, really? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Because sometimes when I stay with the uh, uh, with my team, I kind of blend into a, a yeah. Because I did pick up Hindi as well, and oh, okay. uh, yeah, I picked up Hindi because my, everyone's speaking Hindi, so mm. obviously. So and then, but I made sure I teed, taught them something. Huh? Not everything. <laughs> I don't still uh, uh, fill everything out. I taught them some numbers and Gahana. That's their favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Uh, yeah, so it was really nice that I was able to talk with her and mm -hmm. like just pick her brain up, as I said, and just being around her company shows how fortunate yeah. I am to be in the same air, like you know, level as her to be playing with or uh, basically against her all these times. I was not fortunate enough to be in the same team as her. That's another story. So the fair break, she was in Falcons. And I was in Barmy Army. But again, I was fortunate enough to be part of Fairbrick, which gave yeah. me that platform. Because Fairbrick was the platform where they had majority of the associate nations mm -hmm. mixed with international players to, uh, in that tournament and play. That itself gave us the platform and helped us to improve our game one step ahead. Even though we can't keep knocking on, like, uh, play to be able to play higher ranked teams, or Fairbrick kind of gave us that, you could say, gave us that taste of what franchise cricket is. Mm. At the same time, to be able to play among international stars like Marzan Cap, Heather Knight, Chamariyata Patu, uh, Laura Woolward, and Sophie Devine, and etc. Yeah, I was going to ask you about your experience at Fairbreak because, like you rightly said, it gave a lot of the you know the best players from associate nations also a little bit of a taste of playing with international cricket and maybe kind of playing with cricketers above their level because i mean if i if i talk about you right you've been one of uae's better players over the last over your career and now you get to compete alongside players who are at your level or you know at a higher level right so it it also kind of i would assume pushes you to get better and shows you the kind of the pathways that you can or things that you can work on to get better um you spoke about chamari and like like i've been reminding everyone you're only 21 
has there ever been kind of a thought that maybe someday you want or has there ever been a consideration of maybe playing for Sri Lanka someday that's every associate player's dream to mm-hmm. someday play for their home country because for you if we can mm-hmm. say that because we are all expats over here and even though we play for the yeah. UAE we all hold our home country passport i heard of sri lanka and everyone else hold the mm-hmm. indian passport so uh so that's the thing the thoughts have been there but again i don't know <laughs> just that i've been living all my life in dubai mm-hmm. and i just go like once um once a year for vacation to meet my relatives for like barely a okay. month and everything so maybe the future you never know you could see kausha egorege and uh, you have time exactly i have a lot of time <laughs> you have time so, on yeah. your hands to think about it um, oh so, yeah you never know what the future holds but the dream's always there to wear the sri lankan jersey since you spoke about that like the asia cup playing in sri lanka how was that experience for you like I know you you were wearing the UAE jersey but you know to to see the crowds and to experience that kind of atmosphere in Sri Lanka what what was it like <laughs> Sri Lankan fans never go wrong I'm telling you I, I think we were playing one game against Sri Lanka versus India and then on the side in Dambulla stadium on that left hand side I saw like bunch of Sri Lankan fans with Sri Lankan jerseys having a UAE flag and supporting us <laughs> 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 that was insane i'm just like okay that's insane but again getting back to topic like it was uh, it's very emotional to talk because i get to play in sri lanka with my family even though it's in dambulla my mm-hmm. relatives my relatives they all came from colombo and gaul all the way to watch me play and that's a different feeling you can't get that anywhere and especially the day i played against india i had my mom side of the family there and i was like damn and that day i actually played where i scored 40 odd runs mm-hmm. like 30 30 balls or something i got like smriti mandana and jamima rodrix out and and i did hit deep to for a six as well and then mom side of the family was there and then i was like oh my god this day can't get any better and to meet my relatives after the game and i'm over there like chill with the security like everyone's sri lankan right i'm like you know they are my uh, relatives they're like my family mm-hmm. so it's all right and i would just put in my broken single and speak to them and all that that's a feeling you can't get anywhere they just look up to you like oh my god like this tiny little girl used to <laughs> run around break stuff in the house and back then i couldn't even speak singhala so i would, you could say like uh, Oh, uh, you know those uh, people with like I used to have a very strong English accent before, okay. and then I broke it off, and then like because obviously I want to mingle with my relatives and speak Sinhala, mm-hmm. so I would have this. I was speaking Sinhala but with a very ac- accent Sinhala, like mm-hmm. it's very like you could say I'm out of uh, the country <laughs> kind of Sinhala. So I would speak to them, and then over the years I obviously learned Sinhala more, so I can mingle with them, and they like. Oh my god that was amazing and I just wish that both my grandparents who are no longer with us were part mm-hmm. and were able to watch this because they were crazy cricket fans because when I tell them that you know I was part of the team I was I was what kids when I when they were alive and I would just say you know it was fine I was I made it to one of the games maybe two of the games in that other tour or something and I was like you know and then as I grew older I became a vital part of the team and I was able to contribute and there's no any other feeling than playing at home and everything because you can't take that back the feeling the emotions this mm-hmm. playing at home even though I am wearing the UAE jersey it doesn't matter because cricket is cricket Yeah. It runs in the blood and they can see that tiny little girl who is to always carry a cricket bat is actually doing something for a country which is like home for her and I just wish both my grandparents were there to see me but again mm-hmm. rest of the relatives were there and they they came all the way from Colombo and Gaul just to see me play and if it was in Colombo like if the tour uh, Asia Cup happened more closer to home I could have got a more uh, fan and relatives to come and watch but again the people who came and watched me I thank them day in day out because it's very hard to commute all the way from Colombo Gaul to Dumbo yeah. yeah and it's not easy and I praise that even though my dad took care of the stay and all but 
just to make that effort to come. Yeah. That itself shows that oh my god they're willing and they they want to see me succeed. And when I saw them out there on the stands, obviously every time I go, it's a bad habit of mine. I see who all came and if my, if my parents are there or what time they come and stuff and or so if they miss out on anything, I can fill on them after visiting them uh, in the hotel. And like when they were there, I was like I was internally bawling like oh my god this <laughs> is it. I kind of made it there. you know to be able to play in front of my family and friends yeah yeah of course i mean i can i can totally relate about you know playing playing in front of family is special right yeah. it it does and it's not something you you experience very often because you do play overseas a lot right yeah. um so i'm sure that was a really special experience for you can you tell me i mean we were we were talking about off air about like some of the special achievements you've had like what are the you know the highs you experienced in in that in this decade of playing for the UAE mm. <laughs> there all is highs you know because every game i think that i haven't done enough in the previous game and I, i just feel that hunger going forward and forward and there was so many highs and i would say the special one was when i scored my first 50 mm-hmm. against uh, malaysia in 2019 and to find out a few months later that i did be, break such an tentacles record that that is the all time high for me because you score your first 50 international 50 and then after few months not then and there after few months around november when shafali verma made her debut mm-hmm. she also scored a 50 and then it went on the indian times saying she broke the record a uh, indian uh, indian uh the youngest indian to play uh, break the yep. record and then mm-hmm. in the fine lines you could say the world record is held by kavita egor again at 15 years and 267 days mm-hmm. and that's when it dawned on me that i broke such a tentacles record and it's sad that i couldn't like none of these were run when i scored the thing it has yeah. to be someone yeah. else who had to do and then the glory comes in that tiny line in the end <laughs> but it's hold by kavish agarwal but again a feature is a feature regardless of how it comes but at least it didn't come after 2 3 years it came at the end of the year so mm-hmm. something to look forward to and and yeah that that would be my ultimate high and obviously winning against higher ranked teams mm-hmm. that's that's a high on its own like for us we defeated thailand because it, thailand and sri lanka uh, sorry thailand and uae are like a rival you mm-hmm. could say the thing is like for us main is like thailand have been always one step ahead mm-hmm. like every game i think around we have played around 8 7 games i'm not sure exactly but we have played a lot of games together and they have always defeated us and they and mm-hmm. the defeats were very close like if they like on that given day we would have scored 70 uh, uh, sorry 70 or draws they would chase it in 19 overs so if mm-hmm. um, if they would have scored it in uh, if they would have scored 80 we would have lost by 75 runs like they were very close close games and then in the last uh, two encounters three encounters if you count the warm up the globals we have defeated thailand and they were all tight games and there's no feeling like that because in all of them i had to play kind of like devil's advocate over there and uh, bowling those last crucial overs where you had left Ten, a six odd runs to win, and you need like two, three wickets or something. <laughs> and my, like the one where we played in Malaysia, which actually was our semi-final, semi-final for us to qualify for the Asia Cup. They needed, I think, five, six runs or seven runs in the last over, and obviously I got a wicket as well as, and they couldn't comp- get that score. So that, those kind of wins are very. like the highs and recently we mm-hmm. had a tri series against uh, namibia and zimbabwe and against zimbabwe are a higher ranked team you could uh, see that and we had to chase 13 like uh, ua has chased 13 runs and i was a set batter on and i was able to get them uh, across the line so 13 runs last over not an each of each so those kind of are the little little highs you get but the ultimate high is when you play as a team and mm-hmm. you as uae keeps winning those are the highs because the moment uae keeps winning all the limelight comes on the players as well if you keeps losing the limelight goes away from the players what it, what has it been like like you spoke about like a lot of indians playing and you know a lot of expats right 
what has it been like kind of a, I, I suppose it's re, it reflects society in the UAE as well but playing within a team mm-hmm. how has it been like gelling with players from different nationalities you said that you know many of them hold that dream of you know one day representing you know, their home countries or their birth countries right what has it been like playing with a lot of different players like that <laughs> the funny part of you is like from a young age you are exposed to many uh, multicultural mm-hmm. people because even in schools you can find so many um, uh, multinational even in my uni i had mm-hmm. so many um, different nationality in the same class study so in that way it kind of breaks a barrier for us and we see everyone mm-hmm. equally because if you see in sri lanka not everyone's sri lankan yeah. <laughs> simple as that and then you all have and obviously there are cultural differences a bit between them themselves regarding of festivals and everything mm-hmm. but that's a minor but for us mm-hmm. it's a whole different cultural thing because i might be friends with someone who speaks a completely different language mm-hmm. might be malayalam hindi or even um, uh, french uh, africana and and also within so for us since we grew up uh in schools for the people for ua players who are part who have come through the school levels and who are born and go, brought up over here they are kind of used to this multinational uh, nationality thing but again in the ua team is all indians and just one sri lankan mm-hmm. so <laughs> so that's the thing but as i've mentioned earlier i also kind of blended like in, during asia cup we had um sit down a talk with the indian team so since mm-hmm. we and uh, the indian team were in the same hotel we had a sit down and we spoke with them and they all were speaking in hindi and everything and then uh, one of the management us is um, is everyone from india and i raised up my hand i said nope there's one sri lankan there please don't forget <laughs> so yeah i mean the thing is that when you're with a lot of majority of indians and you i kind of grew up with the cricket team you could mm-hmm. say yeah. it's been like nearly a decade right so you tend to pick up those little you know some little talks dialects and stuff and mm-hmm. all because it's what you do to gel in with the team because yeah. i'm a minority yeah. over there mm-hmm. yes they respect my nationality they respect my culture my language and everything but again i'm the minority over there so i like i blend with them and they also try their best to blend with me as well they try asking me how like um these phrases and stuff and all like um like they always want to say well uh, what is uh, how do you say i'm hungry and i'll say mata goda barigini and they will say mata goda barigini like they will say it so fast like it sounds like a tongue twist and like we have those moments and all and obviously as i said i know hindi and stuff and also i picked up their dialect as well so i mean and in a way it's good to know a language as well you never know what they're going to be speaking yeah. right so, so, <laughs> so it's always better to be safe than sorry and like if you know a language they'll be more careful and stuff and all um as like as the only sri lankan in that in that team at the moment do you feel like there are sri lankans who look up to you and think look if she's achieved this in, in the uae setup are there people who come up to you and talk about stuff like that definitely but again if you notice a majority of the sh- like my sri lankan friends they are all drawn into dancing <laughs> all of them are in either one of these uh, two three dancing classes we have in ua because we have dham parcel so mm-hmm. in the ua the dham parcel is taking place basically you know what the dham parcel is but in dubai yeah. they teach you singhala buddhist and uh, ape urmaya mm-hmm. so they teach that so basically that's our tiny sri lankan community and within that we have the sapoya uh, celebrations our the celebrations nidasu the uh, celebrations and stuff and also obviously we all meet up together and we talk and i'm like you know and people are actually keen on joining like you know playing cricket and all but the thing is like it's very a physical mental thing mm-hmm. and it's very strenuous so they're like that thinking whether whether or not like you can give it a try but again yeah a lot of players do look up to me uh and they're like at a young age like if the parents are very keen because all all my friends are basically my age right so mm-hmm. a lot of young younger generation they look yeah. up to me and they're like um you know 
uh, why it's good and they ask me questions and stuff and all and actually a funny part is apparently for nid uh or something where you wear with the yes, uh, yeah. fancy dress competition yeah. yeah so before the age of nine for that fancy dress competition i wanted to become a cricketer <laughs> i dressed up as a cricketer and i went because um i dressed up as a cricketer and i went so from seeing that a lot of um, the nandas and the mamas who used to taught me and and have seen me now because i just come to the um, festivals and uh, to participate and stuff and they're like you know do i see you uh, dressed up as a cricketer and look now you're actually living the dream so yeah and so i'm currently the only sri lankan right now but Back then, we had the likes of Cham- uh, Chamani Seniviratna, Ishani Seniviratna, and Udeni Kruparra to representing uh, for the UAE national cricket team. Yeah, yeah, there is a bit of history with with the Sri Lankans in the UAE team, isn't it? So yeah, I think we've kind of okay. So I have one last question for you, right? Where okay. do you see things? What's and next then- for you? and where do you see things going for uae cricket in the, in the foreseeable future in the next couple of years i mean currently right now at the moment it's kind of like a off season for us mm-hmm. internationally we have just the domestic games uh going on with the boys and everything and having our normal practice sessions and all nothing so far until the coming year mm-hmm. and again for uae i mean it's just it's simple for us whatever games we get we keep trying doing our best and we keep winning because we know we don't get that many games so we had to make an impact at every single game and for me personally for me is to grow and more make an impact even more than uh, what i'm doing and be more vital to the team yes i am vital but i want to keep scoring keep getting those runs getting those free kick catches and all that obviously get recognized by franchise teams the like of uh, WPL WBBL or the 100 or even if sri lanka is having a franchise uh, league and all women's league and also just want to get recognized by them while doing my best for the uae cricket team okay that's great i wish you all the best i hope we get to see you if not in the sri lankan jersey but <laughs> Uh, in Sri Lanka more often than we have. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much again, Kavisha, for joining us. Just a message to anyone who's been watching or listening. Uh, follow us or subscribe to our channel. You'll be getting a lot of lot more content like this coming up. It's been a special chat with Kavisha, of course, but we've got other content also coming up. Again, reminder: if you want to follow a bit of the writing from Nicholas Brooks, uh, from Dominic Machado, you can you can subscribe to our newsletter on Substack as well. So that's been the Murali end for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back shortly. Um, And all the best uh, to you, Kavisha, as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.